The following program is a presentation of Mount Zion Media Ministries. Um, tonight, I want to talk about do you want to be in the kingdom of God? It's a question for you. Do you want to be in the kingdom of God? And I, I really need you to wake up. If you, if you sleep, I need you to wake up because I need you to hear, hear me. If you're taking notes, you, you, you might want to get ready. And if you're not taking notes, you, you may want to pull your notepad out. Uh, I know you took notes the first two sermons, so don't, don't go to sleep on me now. This Sermon on the Mount, out of which that 33 verse, 33rd verse comes from as the climax of the sermon, comes out of chapter 6, where Jesus is trying to get his followers not to worry. And their worry, from a human perspective, is legitimate. They are worried and concerned about their well-being, about their life, about the lives of their children. They're worried about the basic necessities of life, things like clothing, like a roof over their head, like food on the table. And even those higher, deeper things like health and well-being that none of us have been in control over. And even the attacks of the enemy, anything that life has to throw at you, they are legitimately concerned about it. And anybody who says to you that they're not concerned about the things that happen in this world, you, you, you may want to look at them a little funny. I didn't say you had to go crazy, but you ought to be concerned. Um, and then anybody, any, anybody who reads the Bible, you, you, you've read John 16, where Jesus closes by saying, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have already overcome the world. In other words, whatever happened in the world, don't worry about it, I got it. Amen. Stuff will happen, as long as your address is in this world. But I, I got good news, I've overcome that. So what does that mean as we come to the end of this year and, and get ready to march into next year. First thing it means is don't let anybody fool you. Every year, some preacher, some good, well-meaning church folk, they come up with a cliche. And, and, and the cliche expresses the idea that whatever the year is that's coming up, it's, it, it's going to be all good that you're not going to have any worries. All right? You all have heard them. You know, the year of blessing, the year of this, the year of that. And I'm telling you, don't you let anybody fool you about 2016 with some cliche. Getting it clean in 16, don't you fall for that. Here is what I want you to know. Stuff will happen but you and I, hear me, can still be successful, can still be blessed, can still have favor, can still enjoy prosperity. All the good stuff that God has, to, has for us is ours to have next year. But baby, two things you need to know. One, it's not going to come without difficulty. And two, there's a condition for it. I don't even think I got to deal with the difficult part, so let me deal with the condition. The condition for our thriving and being blessed and all of this wonderful stuff in 2016 is where you choose to position yourself. If you choose to live in this world by the laws and the government of this world, then trouble going to whoop your behind. Life will whoop your behind. It will beat you down and the enemy will overtake you. But if you choose to live under in the kingdom of God, 
then no matter what happens this year or next year, baby, you can have joy, unspeakable joy. Come close to me. All your bills paid. Yeah, your, 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 your relationships, where you need them to be. I just said where you want them to be, but where you need them to be. And least I tear it too long, let me jump right into it. Here, here is the condition, again, that you get into the kingdom. Now, when, when I say that, when others say that, you read that, you just clap because, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God. But I want to take that phrase, kingdom of God, and help you understand, help me understand what that means so you can really get in the kingdom and understand what it, what it means to be a kingdom citizen. One of the reasons uh, this kingdom concept is so hard for us to grasp and why we run by it and don't understand it is because of the world we live in. We live in a democracy. In a democracy, we, we elect presidents and, and governors and other leaders and they are voted for by the people. And the only power that they have is constitutional power given to them by the people when we elect them. And when they do something we don't like, we can choose to do it or not to do it, or we can vote them out of office. And in a democracy, we have leaders who have authority over us, but it's really not absolute authority. In a democracy, uh, the president and the governors and all the other leaders, local and national, while they preside and have authority, they may be the president of America, but Obama don't own America. We may have a governor in Georgia, but he don't own Georgia. He works on behalf of the people of Georgia. And what you need to understand is when you become a part of the kingdom of God, it is different from a president, a governor, because it's not a democracy, it's a theocracy. There are countries that are monarchs, a monocracy where they have kings, but that's not what, what God is. God is a theocrat, not a democrat. And as a theocracy, that means that God is the king. So to come into the kingdom of God means that you recognize God as your king. And if God is king, then that means as a king, he has some dominion. Dominion means he has authority and he has power. And his power, his authority is inherent in his kingship. And just, just, just stay with me. I'm going to preach in a minute. I, I just got to get you there. And, and, and so he's a king, and he has dominion, power, and authority. And it's not given to him because people vote him in. But it's inherent in who God is. The old folk would put it this way. God is just God all by himself. And so God has power that nobody gave to him. His power is in himself. And so if you are in God's kingdom then that means you are under his authority and power and you don't vote for it. And whether you like it or not, you don't get to vote him out. And if you're going to surrender to the lordship uh, and the kingship of, of, of God, then that means you surrender to his kingship. He has dominion power, but he also has a domain. That's territory. And if you are a kingdom citizen, you live in his domain. I just told you in a democracy, the president don't own anything, but in a kingdom, the king owns everything. That means then that your house, you don't own it. Because in a kingdom, citizens don't own property. That means your life, you don't own it. Because in a kingdom, the life of the citizen belongs to the king. Your clothes, Anything that you own, you really don't own. It belongs to the king, and what the king does is allow you to have it as a steward or manager of what belongs to him. I hate, to, I, I hate to blow your mind like this, but your money ain't your money. That car is not your car. It's God's. 
Everything you are, everything you have, it belongs to the king if you want to be in the kingdom. Let me help you read the Bible differently. And, and so to express the lordship of Christ, see, he's a king inherently because he's a king of kings. And so as a king, he has dominion. But his domain is demonstrated in his name. And so in the Old Testament and New Testament, when you see the word Lord, it expresses the lordship of God, the lordship of Christ, and that's the part that deals with his rule over, that you have to be under his authority. And, 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 and you really want to be under that because, like, for example, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. There are other names that David could have used for God. But he chose Lord because it expressed the kingship of God, but as a king, his role as the authority that has a domain or control and ownership of everything. And listen, so he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And you know why he said that? Because when you are part of a kingdom, the king is responsible for meeting your every need. He could have said El Shaddai. He could have said any other name for God, but he chose the word Lord because, because it expresses the fact that the Lord is responsible. Psalms, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and earth and they that we are in. The earth is the Lord because, again, that's his name as the ruler and the owner of everything. And I could go on and on. And then you come to the New Testament in Romans chapter 10, there's a key verse. It says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Translation, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What did he just say? If you can, the word confess means agree. If you can agree that Jesus is the Lord, he's the owner, He's the controller, he's the ruler of everything and come under his authority then and confess that he was raised from the dead, then you can be saved. Am I making sense? And so, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added. God and Jesus Christ, same people, King, Lord, the Lordship of Christ. He said, if you just come to me, be a part of my kingdom, that's, that's your choice to make being in my kingdom first. And now when you come, you, you can't just do your own thing. You, you got to live life my way according to my rules because I need you to be under my authority. Can I just say something right here to the fellows in the house? Young fellows, old fellows, part of the reason that men, I believe, have difficulty in the church, and you see more women than men, is this issue of authority. Could it be that because we've not had to submit to much authority outside of the church, that when it comes to the kingdom of God, we don't want to be under the authority of God because we don't like somebody else owning us and everything about us and telling us what to do. Ladies, could, could it be that some of you can't handle the kingdom because you too got issues with authority? Could, could it be that there are one or two of you who would like the lady who called me on the phone, Pastor Simmons, I'm not a member of your church, but um, I, do you do weddings for non-members? I said, yes, but I have a question. Who is your pastor? And she told me. I said, well, well, well you know, is there some reason you're not using him? Yes, it is. I asked him not to say that part about wives, submit your husband, honey. I told him to leave all that kind of stuff out. Don't say any of that, because I'm not submitting to that man. And I want to know if you can do my wedding, but leave that out. And I use different wedding, you know, 
formulas and I don't always use it, but for her, I said, I'm sorry, if, you, if I marry you, I got to say it, I got to say it. So somebody else did her wedding, I don't know who, but she hung up, bye. So, 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 so could it be that we got authority? Could it be, young folks, this is not for y'all, this is for, 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 for us older folks. Could it be that some of us older folks stuck in the 70s? Y'all know where I'm going, don't you? Could it be we, we still got the Isley Brothers album and we still listening to it? Tell me what that song is now. It's my? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my thing. I can do what I, you can't tell me who to sock it to. It's my thing. I can do what I want to do. I, I want to tell you something. I want to I tell you something as I get ready to, um, to move on. You want to be under the authority of God, which means that you allow him to be the head of your life because there are benefits that come from being under the authority of God. Can I get a witness? Now don't, don't, don't uh, open yours yet, but, but in a little bit I'm gonna ask you to open your umbrella. I told y'all to bring one. If you didn't bring one, shame on you. This is the Lordship of God. And you want to be under the Lordship of God. Part of being under his Lordship means you got to give up some stuff. But the other part is when you give up that stuff, what you get in return far outweigh what you give up. And as you go in the 2016, let me tell you something, you are going to want to be under his authority. Because 2016, like every other year, and especially in this coming year, God has put it in my spirit that some stuff gonna happen. And people who are not under the covering of God, who are not under God's umbrella, gonna have trouble standing if you're not prepared to stand. I'm not trying to scare you, but let me tell you something. Some rain gonna come in 2016 some rain gonna come in your life what are you talking about pastor it's gonna rain some folk gonna lie on you it's gonna rain folk on your job gonna plot to mess your progress up it's gonna rain what's gonna happen what's gonna happen pastor your lover gonna betray you you put all your trust in him or her and they gonna make you cry like a baby it's gonna rain. Your money gonna get funny. It's gonna rain. It's going to rain in your house. And you know what else gonna happen? Rain is that light stuff. It bothers you, but it's gonna be some hell coming too. And when the hell comes, that rough stuff, when you go to the doctor and you get that diagnosis that you don't want, when you um, lose your house, not just get behind in the payment, when you lose somebody that you love, I'm talking about that stuff, whatever it is that makes you cry, when that hell get to beating up against your house, you're gonna need some covering over your head. That hell comes and that rain comes and wind and sleet comes. Baby, that sleet start coming, that wind and start blowing and if you ain't careful, if you ain't covered, you gonna get blown away. But if you got a covering over you, you got the umbrella of God's covering. Listen, listen, I didn't say it wouldn't rain. I didn't say that hell wouldn't come. I wouldn't say the wind and the sleep would come. But what I told you was the difference is you covered. How do you know, pastor? Because the Bible said, the Lord is our refuge. That word refuge means he's our shelter in the midst of a storm. 
So let the rain come in 2016. Let the hail come, let the sleet and the wind blow. But if you're covered, baby, it will come, but it won't destroy you. It may move you, but it won't take you out. You can still rejoice because you covered. Sit down for a minute, let me, let me show you something else. When you are covered, and I need the saints to help me right here. When you are covered under his umbrella, under his kingdom authority, here is what else happens. Um, you are covered by his blood. You, you, you have under the blood? Well, baby, let me, let me tell you why, why you are covered with the blood. And let me, let me call this great theologian to help me. Uh, my dad, Reverend Perry Simmons Sr., my dad has, uh, taught me that when you look at Moses' story, when Moses got ready to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, on that dreadful night, God said, I want you to sprinkle blood on the doorposts of the houses. And when I come by at midnight, everywhere I see the blood, I'm going to pass by. And I, I won't kill whoever is in the house under the blood. And, 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 and daddy said, no, what he said. He said, whosoever is in the house will be covered by the blood. Daddy said, look at it. It didn't say all the saints, all the perfect folk, but whoever is in the house under the blood going to be covered. I said, daddy, how is that? He said, because the blood takes away the guilt of whoever is in the house. The blood takes away the sin of whoever is in the house. The blood covers the disease of whoever that's in the house. And we got to be under the blood because like in that house, in our house, I, I guarantee you, I wasn't there, but some liars, homemongers, homosexuals, Bisexuals, heterosexuals, other kind of sexuals, thieves, dope smokers, drunkards, you name it, they were in there. But the blood of Jesus, if you are under his blood, is powerful enough to cover whatever ails you. And let me take this off for a minute to say you sit up here and act sanctified tonight. But baby, you ain't fooling me. Just like you did in 2015. In 2016, you're going to sin and come short of the glory. And without the blood of Jesus covering you, you are lost and on your way to hell. You don't have anything to protect you from the devil, from yourself. But once you are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, then you have something and somebody to cover you. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Obed Edom. Read a story, Old Testament story. The Ark of the Covenant was in his house, which represents the presence and covering of God. And the Bible says Obed Edom's house got blessed just because God was there. And what I'm trying to tell you is if you want your house blessed, then you got to get under the authority, the umbrella of the sovereign blessing power of God. I told you a moment ago, the king owned everything. And so when the king owns everything, he can take what he wants and give it to whoever he wants to. If Obama takes money and give it to his friends, they call that corruption. But when God takes money and give it to his friends, that's called favor. When God take a cop and give it to his friends, that's called favor. When God heal your body, that's called favor. And you get your blessing from being under the favor of God. Uh, now I'm getting ready to get in a little trouble here. Getting ready to get in a little trouble. It's decision time. I want the men in the house to know that you got to make a decision tonight for your house whether or not your house is going to be positioned under the kingdom of God 
of whether you're going to leave it out into, in the world, uncovered, unprotected, and if you think you can cover your house, brother, I'm telling you, you're wrong. You ain't nothing but breath and britches. You ain't, you ain't nothing. There's no power in you that can conquer the power of the enemy. He didn't say greater are we than he that is against us. It said greater is he that is in us. So I want to challenge every man right now. If you brought your umbrella to stand up and raise it up. And if your people in the house make a decision and say, baby, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to cover you. And everything in my house, I, I want us to be under the kingdom of God. If she yours, pull her close to you. I, I'm going to cover you. I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that when the storm come, the rain, the wind, and all of that come, then, then so, 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 so that we, we can be covered by the blood. We can be covered with God's divine favor. I want to cover my house because it's going to rain next year. Ladies, 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 don't fret. Uh, me, me and just, not, 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 not me and don't, don't y'all get married, but ladies, if you ain't got no man, right now who happen to be in the house, then don't you worry, you raise your own umbrella. And declare and decree that as for me and my house, we will be under the kingdom of God. Ladies, your arm is just as strong as his. And what I want you to know, you, you got a man anyhow, and his name is Jesus. Now, I ain't through. Now, now I don't have armor bearers at Mount Zion, but I may need some after this. Ladies, if you got a man, even if he got his umbrella raised, but you know ain't nothing to that but a show for the night, step away from that brother and get your own umbrella. I said, baby, I ain't playing tonight. I need some covering over me. And if you ain't gonna do it, I'll cover myself. Get your children, get your stuff. Didn't nobody move, didn't nobody move. Everybody ain't got no cover and y'all just fall on the mound, bro. Let me, let me tell you something. I asked you to bring this umbrella because I want you to have this picture in your mind as you go into this new year that, that, that you need covering. And you need it more than ever and your covering is going to come when you position yourself under the kingdom of God. Thanks for watching. Be blessed and continue walking in the light.